Okay, well, my hair is still wet, so if it looks greasy, I promise you it's just water. I'm just, I just don't want to wait for it to dry to film the video, so I put it in a side pony that I don't actually think looks that good, and I took out a piece of my hair. I don't know, I've been running, I like this recently, and I don't know. I don't know if I like it to the side or not. I don't know how to feel, okay? But we're filming my December wrap-up, so, yes. Wait, how does this look? Okay, does this look stupid? Bro, I literally can't tell. I don't know why I called you bro. I never call people bro. I apologize profusely for that. Okay, I just left it down. Yeah, I'm sorry. I need a haircut, but I haven't been able to get in for like three months, so I apologize. Um, just deal with it, okay? deal with it. Hi everyone, it's me Maddie and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. If you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Maddie and I post a bookish related content every single Monday. So if that sounds like something you enjoy, subscribe. Alright, there's my intro, you know, I actually said it this time. And today we are talking about all the books I read in the month of December. Dude, no, I did read 10, I read 10 books. Holy crap, 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I read ten books in December. Wow. Wow. So December was my best reading month. I ended up reading ten books in the month of December. And if we just take a quick look at the stats, because I'm not gonna do a video where I talk about all the books I read this year because it was fifty. It's, it's fifty nine books, and I just don't want to do that to myself. I read twenty six thousand and sixty seven pages. Um, my shortest book was 63 pages and that was The Yellow Wallpaper. My longest was a book I read this month, which I will get to later in the video. Um, my average book length was 441 pages. My most popular was a book I will get to later this month. And my least popular was uh, The Leviathan Prince by C.K. Miller, an indie book. My average rating for 2020 was a 3.5. My highest rated on Goodreads was Never Seen. My first review was of Pumpkinheads, and I just said it's cute. And then my list of books that I read. Yeah. I might have a video clip of this on the screen, but yeah. So my last review of the year is a five star, so I'm excited to say I finished off 2020 with a great, great read. Uh, without further ado, let's get into the books I read in December, because like, yay, wrap-ups. I hate them, but I love them all the same. Alright, so the first book I finished in the month of December was the fourth Percy Jackson book. This is Percy Jackson and the Olympians, book four, The Battle of the Labyrinth by Rick Riordan. I gave this a four star and my granny gave it a four star rating as well. I was kind of disappointed in this book uh, purely because I had heard so many people say that this is like one of the best Percy Jackson books. They absolutely love this book. And so I really thought that I was going to love this book as well. And I just didn't. I don't, I just didn't like the labyrinth part of this book. I found it kind of boring and a little less action packed though. Saying that a Percy Jackson book is less action packed is completely like just a big fat lie because they're all super packed full of action. Uh, but I just was disappointed in this book. I thought it was going to be a lot more fun. I did still give it four stars, so I did still really, really enjoy it. One of my favorite things about this book, or this series overall, is Percy's relationship to his dad and to the gods. And you really get to see that in the fifth book, which I will talk about like right after this one. So you, know, you really, really, really get to see Percy's relationship with the gods in this series, and that's one of my favorite things. And I also love a Percy's relationship to his dad, and I love Tyson's relationship to Tyson's relationship to his dad. I think Tyson is such a cute character. He is one of my favorite characters. I don't know if that's a popular or unpopular opinion, but I do really, really love Tyson. I think he's adorable and I love him. And Tyson's uh, relationship to his father is just so cute and I love it. And then the birthday scene in this book, I have it bookmarked. Uh, dog eared, sorry if that bugs you. But page like 355, I just think it's so funny. Uh, I just, I love, I like the ending of this book because I really like the stuff that goes down. But I gave this 4 out of 5, my granny gave it 4 out of 5. I did still thoroughly enjoy it, but I didn't enjoy it as much as I was hoping to. Just because I found the labyrinth, I guess, less entertaining than other people find it. 
Okay, and continuing on with Percy Jackson, I read the fifth and final book in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series, which is called The Last Olympian. I gave this a five out of five star. I, I loved this book. It was going to be a four star up until the ending, which is probably one of the best endings to a series I have ever read. I do still want more from Percy and the world, obviously, but there's The Last Olympian series, not The Last Olympian, The Lost Hero series. Is that what it's called? the Lost Hero series, whatever, Nico series. I, uh, there is that series which I am waiting to get a box set of, which is Amazon. Amazon, like, it comes in on Amazon, and it's like 40 bucks, and I'm like, no, 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 you were 32 when I added you, added you to my wish list, so you better drop down. And by the time I'm re like ready to, for it to drop down, it's already out of stock, so I gotta wait for the box set to be cheap and come in at the same time, which is like near impossible, apparently. Uh, so I had to wait for that before I can read that, but I did really, really like this, and I just, the ending, I found so perfect. And in this book, Percy's relationship with the gods is so, like, 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 so, like, is shown so well, and I like that so much because all the other demigods, half-gods, half-gods? Are they half-gods? Half gods, godlings, half bloods, half bloods. All of the half bloods like seem to either worship the gods or hate them like. Um. Oh my god. Wait. Please bleep that because I kind of just spoiled something for the first thing we never read the series. Oh my god. Please bleep that. Okay. But some of them like they seem to either really love the gods or they seem to really dislike the gods. Um. And Percy is just kind of like, well, why don't you do this? And I love the interaction with the gods at the end of this book. I find that I just, I loved it. And then the ending was just, like I said, the ending was so freaking perfect. I just, I love the ending so much and I cannot wait to read more of Rick Riordan's work because it's just so perfect. And I'm very excited to read Nico's series. So I, I, it sucks that it took so long for me to read this because I love it, uh, but at least I finally got to it, and yes, five for me, four for my granny. Now, let me try and explain the Percy Jackson series. I, I, I suck at doing this, but let me try and explain. Percy Jackson and the Olympians, book one is called The Lightning Thief, okay? And it is about Percy. This entire series is about Percy. And it is about Percy. Wow, okay, we get it. It's about Percy. So it is about Percy who finds out that he's a half blood uh, and he is like thrown into the camp for half bloods after his mother is taken to hell by a minotaur. Is it a minotaur? by a Greek creature. My throat has gone. Why? Why did it go? Oh my goodness. <clears throat> anyway, he, his mother has been taken to hell. Well, not only does he have to go and save his mother in the first book, but the uh, Zeus's lightning bolt has been stolen, and to prevent an all-out war that can, like, ruin the United States of America, then he has to go and try and find back this lightning bolt. It is a super fun story. I loved it so much more than I ever would have thought I would have, and I totally recommend it to anybody who hasn't read it. But then again, who hasn't read it? Because... I mean, there's a few people. I was one of those people. And so if you haven't read this, do it. It's amazing, and it's just chef's kiss. Okay, so the next book I finished was Rhapsodic by Laura Talassa. Basically, like, two days after I finished the fourth uh, Percy Jackson book, my mom got Kindle Unlimited for two months for 99 cents. Basically, it was like, I think it was like a Christmas deal or something. I don't really care. It's a great deal. Like, whoa. And I used to hate reading ebooks, but for some reason, my mom was like, okay, well, if I get you this Kindle Unlimited, you're gonna have to read the books. Mother, don't you dare worry. It's because of Kindle Unlimited that I read 10 books this month. I can read 10 books a month without the ebook format. But for some reason, ebook is just amazing, and I don't understand it. But I did read Rhapsodic, and I gave this a four-star rating. I had heard really great things about this entire series from Becca and the Books. This says it's for fans of Sarah J. Maas um, and Jennifer L. Armentrout, which I read Jennifer L. Armentrout for the first time earlier this year, and I did like her book. Uh, and so I get why you're saying if you like those two people, you're going to like Laura to help. Laura Tallahassee, and vice versa. But I do have some problems. I only really liked the uh, before 
uh, part of the story is told in two timelines. It's told in the before and the after, and my throat is going, my voice is going, I apologize. But it's told in the before and the after uh, timelines, and the before timeline, I really, really enjoyed seeing that. I enjoyed seeing how uh, Callie got to the point of her relationship that she is at in the uh after timeline with Desmond. And I think Desmond is like a ripoff of Rye, or Reese, sorry, of Reese. I think he's a ripoff of Reese. Um, but I mean, like, he kind of is. He's a, he's like a fake king and everybody hates him, but he's really like a sweet bean. He's a ripoff of Reese, okay? Just, I'm just saying. Uh, and I just, I enjoyed this book, and by the end, I was like really, really hooked. But it just got so, so ridiculous, and I just d found myself not caring. I don't have any plans to read the sequel um, or the other sequel after that first sequel. I don't have any plans of finishing the trilogy. Uh, but, I mean, it was a fun time. I got to read it, which is what I wanted to. I wanted to read this, and I got to read it. So that's all I could ask for. This book follows Callie, who is a siren, and after she murders her abusive stepfather, I think it's a stepfather, uh, she calls upon this magical being known as the Bargainer to take the body and clear her name so she doesn't get in trouble for murdering somebody. And because of that, she gets a bead on her wrist. Now, she ends up having 160 beads on her wrist before we get to the present timeline. Um, and the entire before timeline is what happened to get all those beads. And all of these beads are IOUs for the Bargainer. So whenever he needs something, he will call on you and it'll take away one B for everything he needs from you. Well, it has been seven years since she made all those uh, bargains and he is now back to start claiming the beads. So that's that. That's the story. It's there's werewolves, sirens, fae, I think there's demons, there's the friends, and then it, yeah, but like it's supposed to be like Callie like really dislikes Desmond and then she finds out something and then all of a sudden she's like obsessed and like she loves him and that was really what turned me off. That's what brought it from a five to a four was the whole fact that she disliked Desmond a lot and she was so mad at him for leaving for seven years but then something is revealed uh, about their relationship and she just is suddenly like oh my god Desmond I love you. Uh, and I just, no, I don't like it. If you've read the book, you probably know what I'm talking about, but I don't want to say what it is, because spoilers, duh. Okay, woo, here we go. So the most popular I book, the, well, the most popular I book, the most popular book I read this year was Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling, Rowling, one of the two. I give this a four star. I, uh, okay, so listen, okay, I have a confession. I rewatched all of the Harry Potter movies, uh, like one week before I actually started reading the books, and I really enjoyed them. But one of the things that really bugged me about the movies is the fact that Ginny and Harry's relationship kind of comes out of nowhere. And people say that in the books, Ginny is a much better match for Harry than she is in the movies. Now, I personally never really cared how, like, that she was kind of awkward, um, because, well, I literally loved her movies as a child, so, like, I never really, I was never in on that stuff. So, um, I read the books. I have a whole reading vlog coming out probably sometime in February. February is going to be filled with reading vlogs. I just want to tell you all, it's going to be just like jam packed full of them. But I have a reading vlog coming out sometime in February where I'm reading all the Harry Potter books. And so I read the first one. I read the first one. Um, and I give this a four out of five star. Now, another thing. Uh, I've read this before. I've read this two times before. I read this one in fifth grade, which uh, I gave it two stars then. And I read this once in uh, seventh grade, and I gave it one star then. For some reason, I liked it so much more this time. And I really, really, really enjoyed it this time. And I do it so much that I read the entire series. Not, I didn't read it all in December. That was my goal. I didn't read it all in December. You'll see where I ended off. Uh, by the end of this wrap up, but I did really enjoy this. So, Harry Potter, the first book, is about Harry, who is living under the stairs of his aunt and uncle's house. He soon finds out that he is a wizard, 
uh, and that he survived, he's the only one that survived a killing curse that killed his mother and father. He is then brought to the wizarding world, and it is there that he meets Ron and Hermione, and there's a thing with a Sorcerer's Stone that grants internal life, and he's got to try and stop people from stealing it. Yeah, bad description, but you know what? Like, watch a movie trailer. If you've never heard, if you don't know what Harry Potter's about, watch the first movie trailer. I uh, really enjoyed this, but I did skip some parts because I've read this one uh, three times now. And so I was, I was like, I know what happens here. Skip, skip, skip. I know what happens here. Skip, skip, skip. So I did do that, but I did still really enjoy it. I completely forgot about Peeves. I was like, oh, yeah. Peeves, I remember you now. Uh, but I did really enjoy this one, and I'm glad to have read it. So let's move on to the second book, because I read the second book. I read the Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. I gave this one four stars as well, but if I was doing half ratings, it probably be a 4.5. I don't remember why I didn't give it a whole five. It just didn't feel like a whole five to me. I've enjoyed this one a lot. I had never read this one before, so I really, really enjoyed it. This is one of my favorite. This is, like, up there in my movie list of ratings. This is probably, like, I think it's, like, my fourth place movie. I do really enjoy this movie, and I enjoyed this book, and I enjoyed that Ginny was now at Hogwarts because it got to kind of start seeing what I wanted, which was Ginny and Harry relationship. I kind of got to see a little bit of that. And so I did really enjoy this one. Gave it four stars. I enjoyed it more than the first one, but it wasn't a whole five um, I didn't, I didn't say in my review why it wasn't a full five, I just said it wasn't a full five, so there we go. Alright, the next book I have an entire rant on, on Goodreads, so I will leave that link down below in the description box if I remember in case you want to go read it. Um, it is kind of spoilery, but don't read this book. This is, uh, Maya and the Rising Dark by Renna Barron. So if you don't know, I read Renna's debut last year, well, actually 2019, uh, in October when I was on vacation for my birthday, and I really, really loved it. Though I did predict the ending, it was, I did, I was like, hey, something, something, it's just something, and that, that something, something was, it was that something. Uh, so I did predict the ending of her debut, but I did still really enjoy her debut, so I was very excited when she announced that she was publishing a middle grade, because I love middle grades, and I love fantasy, so middle grade, middle grade and a fantasy sounds like my cup of tea. Well, it wasn't. I gave this a two star, and my granny gave this a two star as well. Now, I do just want to put like a disclaimer that I could have not enjoyed this as much as one would have, because I was reading Harry Potter, and like that's kind of all I wanted to do was read Harry Potter. Uh, very possible, right? Uh, I read the whole first Harry Potter book in one day, so I was really enjoying it, and then I was not enjoying this. So that could definitely play a factor into my dislike towards this book. But, like, it also couldn't, because some of the stuff in this book just don't, it just doesn't, it just, it just doesn't work, okay? Uh, my granny didn't like me either, so it's just not, it's not just me. Basically, this follows Maya, who, uh... 12-year-old Maya is dreaming about summer break on her south side Chicago neighborhood when she witnesses the world bleed, well, re witnesses the color bleed from the world. Basically, she see, she's in school one day and she sees the world go gray, but she doesn't mention it to anybody. But then, when her father disappears, she finds out that she is a godling. Um, and she finds out that her father is the person who does this veil between her human world and this other half demon hell world, okay? Uh, and so then she decides to go back and get her father from the veil, even though the gods told her not to do it. Not to mention that she brings her two other friends, Frankie and Eli, Eli, whoa. Frankie and Eli come along with her. Those are her best friends of the whole world. And conveniently, spoilers, conveniently, Eli, Frankie, and Maya are all godlings. They're just, they're all godlings, all right? And not even that, all right? Not even that. Not even that, but Maya, Frankie, and Eli do not know how to use their magic. Yet, in the time of need, they know how to use their magic. Okay, so again, it's kind of spoilery, but 
Uh, well, Frankie does find out she has magic, and maybe like it's like a month before Maya goes onto the other side to go and save her father. So a month, okay? So maybe Frankie knows a little bit better, but I don't think she would know how to aim at moving targets. Also, Eli thought he could control the dead, but he finds out that he actually has a power of invisibility while they're about to be shot at by these demons, and he knows how to turn Maya and Frankie invisible just right then and there, when he's never even knew he had the powers of invisibility. And then Maya, my god, Maya's power is just so wish-washy, it's only there for convenience, right? Because the first time she does it, she accidentally opens a giant wormhole to her good side of the world, over like the good parallel universe, like the good parallel universe and the bad parallel universe are connected with this giant wormhole that Maya creates. And it's so big that she doesn't know how to like how to close it. But she didn't even know how to open it in the beginning. So she just did it open, and she had to. Uh, her friends Frankie and Eli kinda were like ready to sacrifice themselves to make sure this wormhole closed and no other bad guys got through. But then when Maya goes and gets her father, the wormhole she has to open it takes four freaking ever to get the size of a foot. You guys like my socks? Look at them. But it takes forever to get the size of a foot. And so it, it was just ridiculous and I really am so sad that I disliked this. It seems like every time I put a book on my whatever year anticipated, they all suck. And this is a prime example. So yeah, I read that. I didn't like it, but I read it and there's that. Alright, continuing on with my Harry Potter binge, I read the third Harry Potter, which was the Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban by J.K. Rowling. I gave this three stars. Now, this is my favorite movie, but, like, I, when I rank them on Instagram, I put this as a first place, but really, the fifth movie is in first place because I love the movie so, so much, okay? So, this is like my second favorite movie. And I gave this three stars. I have read this once before, and the first time I read this was in fifth grade, and I gave it two stars. So, um, I found my, I'm reading my review, I found myself bored sometimes, but I said, of course, Sirius is the best character in the entire series, and I stand by that. Sirius, I love him. And I do like that in the fact that in the, the later books we do get to see more serious than we did in the movies because I love serious so, so much. Um, but yeah, I gave this a 3 out of 5 star rating. I found myself bored at some times. I did remember a lot about this book, though, that I, like, when I was watching the movies, I was like, I thought, I thought that was a fact. Like, why was that not in the movie? Like, I thought I, I thought I heard it from here. No, I read it from the book. So, yeah. I also read the fifth Harry Potter, uh, fourth, the fourth Harry Potter, uh, The Goblet of Fire. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, which was a three-star rating as well. I found myself, I was so excited to get into this one because this is where, I, like, I read the first one and the third one before. I had read the second one or the fourth one and up ever, so I was very excited to get to the fourth one because I was like, I've never read these. I was like, woo, we gonna go. And I found myself bored way too often. Even when it came to the tasks, I found myself very, very bored while reading. I enjoyed some bits of it, uh, but I found myself really, 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 really bored. And it was kind of a drag to get through. Um, but moving on, I also read Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. I read this with my granny. I gave this a 2 star, and my granny gave this a 3.5. Um, basically, this is a mystery that takes place in two timelines. The first timeline is when Truly Devious was alive and well, and they were wreaking havoc across the school grounds. Uh, Ellie Ham Academy's grounds. Then the second timeline takes place like in, I don't know, like 2017 or something. Um, and basically, uh, Truly Devious was the mystery of who that person was was never solved. And so our main character, Stevie, has come to this school believing that she will be the one to figure out who is truly devious. My camera's about to, my, I gotta restart this video, so hold on. Okay, there we go. 
So yeah, basically Stevie comes to the school to try and figure out who Truly Devious was um, and like where the people who, like what happened to the people that Truly Devious attacked, okay? Um, and then she find then people start dying in the present timeline. And this book, I had heard such good things about. I had heard people say that, like, oh, this is a really good book, except for the insta-love. And I was like, insta-love? I was, like, reading this, I was like, Nate is such a great character. Nate has, like, been developed. It could be, like, friends to lovers. Nate and Stevie would be great. She goes for David. She goes for David. Dude, her and David had no chemistry whatsoever. Not to mention the fact that I feel like the author was trying to go from like, even just like disliked to lovers. And she went from annoying David to, oh my God, I'm obsessed with him, David. Like that, no, Maureen Johnson, that's not how these work. If you're gonna do a haters to lovers, you gotta make them haters and you gotta develop the relationship, okay? You can't just have what this was. You can't have what this was. You can't, okay? It doesn't work. I'm sorry, okay? Haters to lovers is like my favorite romance trope and it makes me so mad when people don't do it right. Anyway, so David's the love interest, and it is insta love. It's so bad. It is so, so bad. Um, and then this ending was so ridiculous. Basically, if you want to know who killed Truly Devious, you're not going to find out in this book. Not who killed, who is Truly Devious. I'm sorry, who killed, I meant who... If you're going to find out who killed these people and who Truly Devious was, you're not going to find out who tr Truly Devious is in this book, okay? Because it ends off on a cliffhanger that I could literally care anything about. I, I don't care at all. Like, if you put this book next to a pile of water, I would pick the water over what I care about more because this book sucked. I hated it. I gave it two stars. I See, I don't... I, I, I don't know if I just didn't enjoy this as much because I was reading Harry Potter and I was really into the Harry Potter world and this is like a chore to read. I don't know, but I hate it. I despise it. And Troy, you lied to me. Like this, Troy loves this book. Now I'm scared. I, t I got another book based off his recommendation and I hated this one. So like, maybe mysteries aren't for me. I don't really know, but two out of five stars. I did not like this. It did not work. My granny will be reading the sequel, so I will try and remember to update you guys on what she thinks of that if you guys want to know. She hasn't got it in from the library yet, so she hasn't even started it as of filming this, which is the 4th of January, but we'll see. Alright, and then because this footage we've been filming for forever, we'll get to the last book. The last book I read this year was a 5 star. This is the book I read that was 870 pages, the longest book I read this entire year, and that was... Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix by J.K. Rowling. Y'all say this is the boring, the most boring book. Y'all say that this is the worst book. No, it's not. This is the best, okay? my uh, An ex-boyfriend of mine was reading the Harry Potter series and he did not like this book. He didn't like this book at all. But like... He said it was so boring. It was so great, okay? Like, the beginning was a little bit boring. It took me a little bit to get into it. But I personally think that the fact that I found the, the beginning a little bit boring was simply due to the fact that I had read the first four Harry Potter books in a span of, like, two weeks. I was, like, pooped, all right? I was exhausted, okay? And then we got to Hogwarts, and oh, my God, I love it. The Hogwarts scenes in the Harry Potter books are my absolute favorite, purely because I love the school and I just I love this book so much I can't express how much I love this okay I love this book it was five out of five fan freaking tastic amazing joyful beautiful loved it I love this book this is my favorite book out of the entire series I haven't even finished the seventh book but I already know that this is gonna be the best book ever because it's it's so good so good so freaking good. I loved it so, so, so much. I loved 
I loved Caps Lock Harry. People like complain about him. I freaking loved him. I loved the torture that was Harry was being inflicted that was being inflicted upon. I loved everything about this book. I loved it so so much. And so you should really watch my uh, reading vlog of the Harry Potter books when it comes out in February because you'll get to see like what I'm talking about more in detail. This was just amazing. It was so good. It was so so good. So good. I love it. And you know what? My ex-boyfriend, you were wrong, okay? This is not the most boring book, okay? This is the best book, okay? You you haven't read enough books to think this is the worst book in the series because you're wrong. This is the best. It was great. I loved it so, so much. And we, I'm so glad we finished 2020 off on a high note because, dang, was this book amazing. And I loved it. I already said it, but I loved every single minute of this book. And it was great. It was phenomenal. I loved it. Great, great, great. Anyway, guys, I'm going to end this video here. Yeah, I only read four physical books, and I read ten books in total. So, you know what? Uh, I'm sorry all the books that I own that I should have read this month and didn't get to. Um, don't blame me. I got Kindle Unlimited. I read Harry Potter. I loved I love reading Harry Potter. I get why so many people like the Harry Potter books, because I've really been enjoying them. And I wish I could reread them for the first time again. I get when people say that because I really wish I could. Um, but yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed this wrap up. I'm so sorry that it was so, so long. Now imagine if I did my November along with this one. Ha! <laughs> yeah, I don't even want to think about that timestamp. Anyway, thank you guys, like I said, so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, do not forget to get a big fat thumbs up. We've been filming it for so long, my hair has pretty much dried itself. So that's when you know you've been filming for a really long time. The fact that my voice is also going out, kind of another factor. Anyway, like I said, I love you all so much. I'll see you guys all next uh, Monday for another video. And yeah, what's the best book you read in December? Mine was, of course, The Fifth Harry Potter. It was amazing. Uh, and I, I hope you guys tell me what your guys' best was. So yeah, see you guys all later. Love you all. Bye. Subscribe. Like. Comment. Do all those fun things. And uh, don't forget, I'm still a freaking bulldozer. Okay. Bye. Wow, that was a mess.